How we doing, guys? Welcome back. So, last time we cleared out the little ritual in, I think this is the Upper Way or something it's called. I don't think the room's ever actually listed, but the, the ritual here, we've cleared it up. There was a Chaos Spawn that had spawned in. We dealt with it. it it's a lot easier than the first Chaos Spawn. Uh, there is a bunch of safes and stuff I've noticed here, so... Okay. Oh, I think I've read about this. So there is a puzzle in this room. And I think it starts Just here. As I planned. Uh, do do do. Supply must be distributed, collected in no case, blah blah blah. Okay, so. Start by powering the cogitator. My success is an irrefutable certainty. Now there's a bunch of these, and I'm told. Yeah, if that happens, it's not a related one. So we're gonna go around the room and just look Let for all of these. Okay, that's the uh, correct one. So going round... Is this the next one? I was told to go round, like, anti-clockwise. Just basically what I was given as a hint, so... Okay, so that's another one done. I guess we go through here. I always have a backup plan. Nothing in here. And then this one? Oh, we leveled off that, okay. Curious. And then this, that's a false one, that's a false one, literally it's go around clockwise. Um, okay, so that's the button to trigger it, I believe. And then over here. And that opens the set. Okay, there we go. So all you get is a hand flamer and a stub carbine, but we got the experience from it. That's what actually mattered. I always keep my options open. So going through quickly, let's get this level up in. Uh, we are Law Imperium. The tech priest has all the other stuff, and, and unlike last time, I want the as many operatives in because operatives stack really well. It's kind of embarrassing that that's the way they've done it, but hey. Uh, definitely perception bonus, because we need as much damage as possible. I'm thinking now to start gearing. Not only do we have an optional boss coming up, but we have the Space Marine fight at the end of this uh, act, as it were. I'm not going to spoil too much of how it happens, but th th there is a big armor fight, for those who are unaware, and that's going to change how we uh, go through things. So that's help of getting toughness. That's not bad, because that would essentially be eight extra temporary wounds if he ended near what he's supposed to be targeting. Or we can get some deflection up. And deflection's going to matter a lot for keeping him alive. But that's only for this combat. This is for the next turn. So this helps him getting shredded against getting shredded at the start. This helps in the long run. we'll go with this and then make him as tough as possible I i'm planning on having avalard maybe go vanguard so his damage output isn't that relevant okay we've maxed out warp so i don't think we have anyone training in medicaid so i guess you can go with that yeah we i mean pascal's kind of got it but that's just because he's got pluses and everything he's not going to be focusing into that though so go along with that normally perception be a good way of dealing with things but she is a Psyker and we need her to do willpower damage, so we'll go with that. I believe next level is when we get Psy ratings up. So, do have to keep an eye out for that. You, um, hmm. So the question here is, do I gear her towards dealing with armor? Or do I gear her towards dealing with everything else? Because that's kind of going to be important here. What's a flame expert weapon do? That lets us use the flamer attack for 1 AP. That's interesting. Doesn't necessarily help too much against bigger targets though.
that at least does extra damage. Because that's, what, three extra damage on an attack? You put all the bonuses we get on the sniper round to that. That might be a thing. So we'll go with that. And then we've maxed out Ballistic Skill. Perception's not relevant. Her, we're not turning into a melee, so this is relevant. Uh, Willpower could be a thing, but I don't think we need that as a priority. Yeah, I'd rather have the Agi bonus and just be really hard to hit, as well as good in Demolitions. You, all the Persuasion skills. Um, coercion's the lowest don't think we have... Actually, does it tell me? It should tell me if I click it. So we don't have anyone particularly skilled in coercion. And we're higher on those already. So it's probably that. And then, again, Psyker. I mean, Fellowship would be the priority stat, but we've already maxed out on that, apparently. So, moving on. You... I mean, Tech use. And his priority is these. Medicaid, sure, but that's but much further down the line. He's got these all to focus on for the moment, and yeah, I guess it's perception. Looking at that, again, int would be the priority, but perception's just as good. Okay, so I think that's all done there, and then we'll head downstairs and go fight a boss. So for those unaware, there is an optional boss for this room. Now, there is a thing with this boss where, technically, I think you can skip one of his stages. If I remember. At least you could in beta. I'm unsure. They might have uh, hard-coded it. So, for those unaware, or there's a bunch of perception checks to find these sigils of each on each platform. you got to press all three of them, then go talk to the heretic downstairs. There is some loot to pick up on the way around, so we should pick that up. But... Or not particularly right now. I can see behind it. My soul is open to the light and his faithful servants. The rest is merely fleeting frailties that hold no significance. There it is. I was wondering where that one was. Uh, so we've done that one. Did we do that one? We did that one. So now the fight starts, which you'll start when you click this guy here. Yep, Percep I assume it's a perception a check, or is it just when you get close? Now, Awareness check there. Yeah. Colors have faded. So, of me? can stack a bit or for this fight to make things easier, which probably Look Abelard no here. I believe he always goes this way first on his teleport. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Do but it means we stack our people audience? so everyone at least has a line of sight over here. Alternative is to come up here. I'll have my sniper and my Let's officer come up there. The and then everyone else can be like on the low ground. Deal with it that way. Join me in prayer. Uh, we'll have these two hard acting as a middle yes. ground actually, because you need to go do the warp test. Sometimes you you be there. The on and weigh every step. and let's get this started then. The so yeah, you go here. I assume you pass the warp test. I'm, I'm not sure what happens if you fail this. I assume you get ambushed. But then you get to distribute. But the thing to track is there's a bunch of little neutral people running around. Whatever platform he teleports to, he'll turn them all hostile. So you don't want to be in the middle of them. So you there. You stand there to hold those two up. Sister, tuck yourself in. There's not too much range fire in this fight, but... It's not worth, you know, hanging around. You're as far up as you can go. I guess you tuck yourself in there. That's probably the best line you're going to get. And then you can just be next to her. Because it doesn't really matter about them. He does do some AoE stuff, but it, it's not particularly dangerous. If I seem to remember. Walks forward. Does his scream. That's the thing that turns everyone hostile. Okay. And then freaks out a little. Sure, I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> uh, should probably have this down there just so people can see all the uses. 
Okay, so thing with this boss, whenever you do 25% of his HP, he teleports to the next platform. So when we get him down to what 120, he'll I assume I think it's always here next, but he'll teleport, turn everyone here hostile, do it again, teleports here all the way around. So question becomes how do we I'm just gonna have a look at this flip. So in theory you can do 40 damage to him before it's relevant. But then you want to hit him with the hardest shot you can uh, in the hopes you might be able to skip a platform, essentially. Haven't particularly tried this hard doing it that way. And normally you can just kill him. No, it's not the hard, that hard a deal. But I'm curious what happens if you do manage to get past without triggering all this stuff. So let's drop a flamer down. We do have the thing now that he takes extra damage from the next attack having been AoE'd. So assuming this hits... Not only is he on fire, but he'll also take t extra damage. So that's that done. Pop that now, because I want to clear up as many of these little ones on the platform as possible. Something like that. I don't want to hit him again, because I want to save that extra damage boost. But I'm quite happy to hit the other guys. Okay, that sounded like that last shot hit anything, but I didn't see it hit anything, so curious. Pop that, we'll need that as up as soon as possible. Yeah, okay, so the neutral guys do attack the hostile guys. I was wondering about that. So, pop the buffs, pop this. Uh, do I want to pop this? That just reduces his damage. That's not particularly applicable right now. It's as good I'd as rather done. get stacks going up. And then... Could pop a shot into him now. It wouldn't put him low enough to trigger the thing. Or I could pop this in. And then maybe shoot someone else. Because these guys should have stacks now. And I gain stacks by killing just people with the debuff. Would also kick up momentum. So let's go with that plan. So we'll put this on him. That should at least reduce his dodge and stuff. We may do it again later on, but for the moment that should be fine. Move that guy. They should all swarm up. They might start taking pot shots, but I, I, they're not doing that much damage, let's be honest. Okay, Adira. Pop that on you, because of the stat boosts. Then, could pop this in here. That would zap our own guys, so that's not a particularly smart way of doing but things. Of course. Put that up. Kind of want to remove this guy at the back and just leave him alone. Uh, or that guy. Both are viable targets. That guy's going to be harder to hit. So, probably put that... No, because that'll use our thing. So let's just let's just zap someone. We do have to be careful of warp de uh, degradation because there is a demon. But let's remove that guy. Could pop that again. It would keep it going longer. The thing is, how long does this last? Until the start of the operative next turn. So that exposed weakness we did was actually completely pointless. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Slight mistake on my part. Uh, that will uh, keep it going now until that, but he should have his stats chunked. But then we can focus on uh, actual doing damage. Okay, he runs in, probably stabs her. Okay, parry, not bad. But then you can do your stacks, and these will be kept for the damage boost. Also could pop this. It's not bad. Uh, pop this for later. This is mostly recoil stuff. But that would stop us going and killing that guy. So do this. Walk over here and just get rid of the last uh, little one. And then everything can go into the big guy. Sworn enemy. What's that debuff he's got on him now? I know Adira put it on. Okay, reduce his toughness and willpower. That'll help out a bit. If I swing at him now, that'll chunk him a bit, but it won't put him to... Uh... 
Yeah, it won't put him to 25%. Or will it? Because he's currently on 141. But that's because we reduced his toughness. I'm curious whether that changes something. I'm going to leave it for now. I'll just pop all these so that we're tough enough to survive any attacks that come our way. And then we'll get the officer to buff the sniper and we'll do it that way. Put that there. Then do this. And then we'll have our turn doing that. Popping surefire plan. So he now has a whole bunch of armor degradation and just general lack of everything. So this should chunk him really hard. Won't kill him, but... Yeah, that's skip to platform. That's skip to platform. That's really good. So. That does mean... Wait, does he... Yeah, because he teleported to this platform, but roared that platform. Now, the annoying thing is, because I set him on fire, he might trigger it again when that happens. Unsure. But no way of figuring out till we do it, so uh, yeah, I guess that's just the end of the turn. Okay, he did it twice. That's annoying. But we proved you can skip platforms. So. In theory... If we can stack up more exploit stacks, we can do it again and it'll work better this time. Pop Revelin Slaughter. Uh, and then... I guess just flame at this slot. It's where it's really good to save a run and gun if you don't need to use it rather than use it all the time. Yeah, I guess just burn that lot. A lot of kills. This will hopefully get this back up really quickly. I can only do single shot now. Can't hit that guy. Can't hit that guy. Just looking if I can do any extra damage. Looks relevant. Because this slot should all burn to death. Uh, I guess just try kill that guy. Or chunk him at least. Because this lot will all group up and run around, but they'll all just die to the system. We don't need to worry about them. You should now have zero armor. Which should mean, even though we're not buffed anymore, this should still hurt. And potentially just one-shot him. Is there anything else I can do for damage purposes? No, because we're already in sniper stance, blah blah blah. I'm assuming... I'm literally just going to check everything because there's a chance this fails, but I assume this is my best chance to save the people on the last platform. Again, I don't know if this does anything. We're going to try. Who if not me? Okay. A lot of people on the last platform survived. No idea if that's going to do anything. We'll have to finish the fight first. So let's go on with that. Yeah, that... All the, that lot we set on fire last turn should just burn to death. So there's just the one guy running around. Just so many kills just happening in their turns. It's hilarious. Okay. Pop here. Put that on her just because she's going to take fire. I assume... Oh no, there is a lightning shot. That'll help clean things up much quicker. Uh, I guess. But at that point, we're just wasting time, but it's not particularly important. Uh, do you even get a shot from over there? I don't know. It's just there's all these souls going around. I assume that's the effect of the warp going around, uh, on. But, oh well. Pop this, because we can. Pop that, because we can. Low chance of hit, doesn't really matter. Okay, never mind. Uh, did I miss a guy? Oh, there's one guy left, okay. I was wondering what we were stopping for, but no, there's, there's one guy left. We can go kill him in a minute. Probably just the officer giving command to... Yeah. I assume I have a shot anyway. I do. Okay, bye. So yeah. I don't think saving the people on the last platform would have changed anything, but that's how you would shorten the fight. 
on I assume on the harder difficulties that's the ideal way of doing it but it'd be even harder to chunk him so yeah do to do I assume they don't have anything to say they're just cowering in fear but they are alive at least that has to count for something in somebody's book I assume so what do we actually get because I don't think the guy actually has a corpse it's this pendant isn't it Especially hits the single sort of attacks, uh, target suffers slowed. Does it tell me what slowed does? Minus three movement points. Okay. That's not terrible. There's there's definitely usage for that. Keep your wits about you. Do have to be careful with it though. But we do actually have a use for exploit weakness, because that only happened because of exploit weakness. So against super high armor targets where exploit weakness comes in. Is there money to be made? So, good to know. That'll be definitely useful to plan around later. I think that's all the loot on corpses. Yes. Uh, you would get loot Rise from them, the but it would only be knives. And, I'll be honest, if you're after that level of loot, you are really min-maxing to a point where you're, you're kind of taking the fun out of the game, I think, in my head. It's far better to play. At least if you're not trying to kill everybody, try and save people, <laughs> even if they don't really matter. Okay little trap down here. I do remember this from Beta, so... Pop around here, and then there's some goods. I don't think it's particularly important. Yeah, it's the damage versus Demon's Cloak, right. Uh, ironically, it's best at the moment. I say at the moment because it changes later on Tech Priest. Because he's actually the only dogmatic in melee. But later on, when you get the interrogator, I do believe that changes. So... With all that said and done, that's this little area done. So that's two little bonus things for people. Well, at least people who might have missed them. It is possible to miss stuff in this game, so I do try to cover all the ones I can. And then I think we head up to the city and probably just clear out the rebels. Well, I'll aim to try and get to the command center this episode, I think. I don't think the fights from here are too hard, but there are a lot of them, so I might set it off. We'll see how we go. It'll either be one episode or two. It just depends how long I feel like going today. Because, you know, right up to Christmas, everyone's busy. Took a while loading into this one. I think that's just because it's a much bigger map. Come on, you're at 100%. Give me the button. There we go. Jesus. I think I was asking too much of the machine. Right, so, moving into the next area. This, is this the area with the is confrontation in the made? middle? definitely a lot of dead people. Yeah, I think this is the area where there's a crowd here you can interact with. So let's just skirt around the edge for the now. We'll do that in a minute. That's to the eastern side. That's the booby trap to hell bags. Which I made a whole episode about in beta because they really didn't want you to get to this lot. So hopefully awareness checks are on our favor. This popular impact was a worthwhile Nothing escapes my sight. See what I meant? Never doubt me. Pay just trap after trap after trap after trap. I'm actually going to have to move everyone closer just to make the sure I didn't miss any with any awareness <laughs> checks. Because it's, it, you can definitely fail one and then tread Seems on it without realizing in this section. I don't actually think there's anything that important in this bag, but... Through my service. You would have thought, considering how much protection they put on it, there had to be something in here, right? And we leveled again. Just, just getting rid of explosives is another level. Jesus. That, this is what it means. I know we did an optional boss fight, but some of the levels early on... This is not as bad as beta. It's not as bad as beta. But you do get them rather quickly. So we'll do this again. And then... Uh, I don't know probably do the bit up there then call it an episode and then we'll clear out everything in the next one that'll probably be a lot uh 
more enjoyable way of watching it because I don't want this to run on too long. So, what do we want? Again, we have to think about killing that damn space marine later on. That's really good for long range shots. And the Black Stripper skill isn't bad. Uh, this, by the way, is really, really strong. But we are nowhere near that level of perception bonus, even with all our buffs going. So that's something to fear. Um, that's a good damage boost. I'm looking for anything that adds base armor, pe armor pen. Uh, don't need that. Don't need that. That's defensive. I mean, you can... I have noticed this now. When you're leveling, you do get options of filtering it out. So this is all the defensive stuff, which we can ignore. This is all the support features, which I guess is going to be all exploit weakness-based, or party-based at least. Uh, yeah, that looks like it. This is the general talents. Don't particularly need any of them. Although a perception boost is a thing. This is also a thing. Um, but that's chances. That's We don't really need hit chances, the thing. We need damage. And then this is all our particular thing. Yeah, I do like this feature that they've added in. That, that's a lot better. Uh... That's not a bad one for increasing damage. Because essentially it works out a plus 5 damage on the main target. Or is that percent base? One sec. That's percent base. So that's 5% more damage on focusing a single target. Okay, so that's not as good as the other ones for long range shots. That's good for 10 to, to, to do. I think this one works out best. But that's only if you haven't moved. So many choices. Like it's, This is the point where if you're trying to min-max, it gets really complicated to figure out which one's it, the best one. But... Hmm. I think I'm going to go with this one. Because this one's the easiest to set up. You just run away. <laughs> and therefore, we, we want to be as far back as possible the rest of the time. Anyway, I'd love an extra range increase somewhere. But I don't think I've got that anywhere here. So, you know. This is another one that I think I'm going to have the other operatives pick up. Because that will be very important later on. We're still going into Lore Imperium. We are one away from getting this, but then we won't be able to get a talent to buff whatever ability we got till later on. Warrior apparently gets their ability immediately, which, okay. Um, I mean, so this lets you charge through people. Yeah, I remember that. That's damage. I'd rather have a taunt because, again, I'm trying to turn him into a bit of a tank. And then for common, could just give him a whole bunch of wounds. That is not a bad idea. But I'm hoping... To do, so that gets rid of melee superiority. That knocks people back. That's not a bad one, but... That's help. That's that one's actually really good. Okay. And then wasn't there? That's the imperial thing. So what did you get as your emperor's uh, your humanity's finest? So that'd be toughness. That's not as good as agility, generally speaking. So. Hmm. Could give him extra dodge. I don't think that's particularly relevant. That's movement. That's bonuses to parry. That's not a terrible one either. 
But I think I'm going to go with... Yeah, I'm going to go with the get into cover one and just have an ability that lets me scatter a bit more. Because that will be really helpful for ambush fights. Then you... Uh, you're the one we want. Because her exploit weakness is actually really good because of that talent we picked up. I can't remember which one it was. Uh, it was like weakened soul or something. One sec, I'm going to have to go look at it. That one. So she reduces toughness and willpower already. I ideally want her to be the one that does expose weakness because I think she has the lowest agility anyway. But let's see if we can pick up anything else that matters. That's not terrible. Just getting extra stacks on the main target. That's not terrible. We could, you could slow a lot of key targets down really quickly. That's good for stacking exploits. Other than that... Oh wait, I'm on the main talent because I'm being dumb. I forgot this is level 10. There's one trait you should always pick up at level 10 for psychers, and that is just this because <laughs> it unlocks a heck of a lot later down the tree. So we got that in. Currently you're doing this and we were having you on Medicaid. So we'll get you going further down there. You. Dash is good. Gets you out of combat when you don't want to be. Uh, that's good for firing into combat. That's really good for buffing the area attack of the flamer. Because the flamer is mostly done by dodge. And the extra damage will matter. Because what's that going to be... That's 100% extra damage on the Flamer. That's insane. We're going with that one. I mean, it'll also work when we pick up the Melt, because it's an area attack. And then... Uh, we have Athletics covered by Abelard. Medicaid is covered by Adira. Imperium is covered by me. So I guess it's Awareness. Awareness is always good on everyone, but if you want to at least make sure all the other skills are covered, as it were. Okay. You, do you have any way of... Uh, no, what am I doing? I, I forgot immediately. Again, we're going down and putting in uh, Cyrain. Because we want all the Cyrating. Where, where's your Cyrating talent? Do you not get a Cyrating talent? I thought you would, because if you are level 10, you definitely should... Then again, I guess she's not unsanctioned Psyche, is she? She just gets Navigator ability, so maybe she doesn't get it. I'm just going to go through this one more time, but she... I would have thought she'd have got Psychic abilities. It's not there. Okay, that changes a few things. So... Does this resolve increase by free? Uh, whenever there is... Uh, against it. That, that's tanking. That's not particularly relevant right now. If it targets an ally with an action. Okay. Uh, that's, that's good for stacking up the um, dismantling shot. That might be worth something. That's defensive. That's not a bad one, though. So that's a good burst one for getting extra stuff out of you bring it down. Losing six health is not a particularly big deal. That's good for buffing throughout the combat.
That's good for buffing yourself. That's defensive again. So this is all the defensive stuff. Um, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's an interesting one. Essentially just getting an extra turn to get something off. That's going to matter a lot. Even if it's just putting more weakness uh, exploit stacks out from one of the operatives. That'll be good for later on. Okay, so we're going to go with this one. And then... Hmm. Well, I was going willpower based. But if you're not actually a psyker build with this... Because you do get all your navigator stuff and willpower will affect it. But... I'm actually tempted to put it into other things now, then. Let's put it into willpower for the moment, because I can't think of what else you would put it into. But I definitely need to keep that in mind for later on. I assume she'd get Psy rating like everyone else does, because she is a Psyker. But I guess not. Anyway, um, you, I want chucking out more exploit stacks. Because his damage is not going to be particularly high with his build. But, that doesn't mean you can't use it for other stuff. That's countering melee. I'm just having a quick glance for all these things. That's good for increasing his damage. But, I don't think any of this is particularly going to change immediately. So let's go up and pick ones that do more exploit stacks. In fact, doing them at the start is probably a good idea. Where's that one? Uh, or do we already have that one? We already have that one, in which case we go with this one. Just get more out there. Could do that. Could do any of the damage talents, but I just want more exploit stacks to make the sniper better. It's my priority anyway. Um, I guess you can go into Xenos. Because you've already maxed out the other two. Okay. So that's all that done. Sorry about that long one. I wasn't expecting another level quite so soon. I wasn't prepared for that. This. What's this do? Law Imperium tests depend on fellowship instead of intelligence and gain plus three. Curious. I mean, the highest fellowship is you. Well, it does put it quite high, but it's not quite as high as that. Eh, it's a good backup, I guess. But then we move up here, and we'll do this little section, and then move on. So there is all this. You can, I believe, just start the fight, Always but I think there was a cutscene, so it would, probably wouldn't do anything. Ten people and children. I'm looking at changes from beta, essentially, because we came here second in beta, so I'm curious if anything changes here. Yeah, it's the man who's sort of succumbing to madness, but not quite fully there yet. And then you either get to be trying to reason with him or just yelling at him. Uh, no, you tell me. What? Who are you and what are you doing to these unfortunates? I am the Chief. Yes. Chief is such an odd name in the 40k universe. Cause, yeah. I know it's not his real name, but the Chief is a little short. I would have had another title in there. Um, blah, blah, blah. I think this is supposed to say he's being manipulated. And then everyone's going around, like, putting their inputs in. So. Need the logic out of it. That's okay. I Iconoclast does come in here, which... That's a reasonable way of approaching. I assume this is the option if you don't have Iconoclast, but you still want to save them. And then... 
adopted and blood children are here. I raised them all. Man. Okay, so it, like he seems to be a good man behind the madness. What are you trying to save them from and who's behind all this? Uh, who's great prophet? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we get a little insight on Aurora at least. I assume that'll come in useful later. So we're going to go with the Iconoclast route. I assume this is the option if you want to save them without thing. And then this starts a combat. Goes for his thing. And then you get to choose between uh, killing him or letting him go. I imagine there's some... Uh, no, th th there might be some repercussions for this later. We're going to go with the Iconoclast route. I have no idea what the difference is, but... Sticking to a route is definitely better than not sticking to a route. And then I think the whole situation disperses. Rise to the top, see that? or get left and in then the just dust. Explosive, you're having it. I'll deal with that next time because this episode's gone on long enough. So, I will leave it here, and I will see you guys in the next one.